What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a little bit more of an in-depth look at what's possible with Spectre's exploit. So this is the exploit that can enable the debug settings on the PS5. Now I showed that off in a previous video showing you a simple way of getting the exploit up and running by using a website that's already got the exploit hosted for you. But in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the exploit manually yourself on your own computer mainly because when you do it this way, not only can you enable the debug settings, but you also get the ability to access some of the other features that this exploit has, which I haven't really seen many people show or talk about thus far. So of course, that's the ability to dump your kernel data as well as sending RPC commands to the PS5. So we're going to take a look at that here in this video. So first of all, we're going to head on to the settings. We're going to go down to system, system software and system software update and settings. You want to make sure download update files automatically and install update files automatically are both unchecked. You also want to then head to console information and make sure you're on the right firmware. So system software version, you've got 21.02-04.03. So that 04.03 is firmware 4.03. So you can follow this on 4.03 or 4.50 or 4.51. So all three of those firmwares are apparently supported by this exploit. If you're on a higher firmware, you're not going to be able to do this. And if you're on a lower firmware, then you can update to 4.03 in order to do this. But I wouldn't recommend it at this stage. You're better off waiting on a lower firmware until a full jailbreak comes out. You also want to note down your IPv4 address as well which is also something that's useful to have. Another thing, if we head back into system and we go down to web browser, you want to make sure allow cookies and enable JavaScript are enabled and then you should be good to go. So, so on the computer, you're going to need to download the latest version of the exploit from Spectre from the GitHub page. Again, all the links will be in the description. Just go to the code and download it as a zip file. You can see that 4.51 firmware support has been added. So go ahead and download that. And then you also want to download the latest version of Python, Python version 3. So make sure you download that as well. So extract the zip file for the exploit to your desktop and you'll have this folder right here. And obviously install Python version 3. You can also install it from the Microsoft Store. So then we're going to go into this folder here because we have a bunch of Python scripts. So what we want to do here is go up to the file path and copy the file path. And then we're just going to go ahead and open up a PowerShell window right here and run it as administrator. So right click on PowerShell and run as administrator. So from here, we're just going to type in CD and then paste in the file path and press enter. And then that will take us to the location of these Python scripts. So the script you want to run is the host.py script that will run the actual exploit. So we're just going to type in Python and then we're going to type in host.py and press enter. And you can see there it's running the server. So we've got that set up successfully. So the next thing we need to do is set up fake DNS. Now, the reason we need to do this is that we need to redirect the user guide. So whenever we go to the user guide, it's trying to access manuals.playstation.net. And we need to redirect that DNS address to the IP address of our computer so that when we go to the user guide on the PS5, it will take us to the exploit host instead. So in order to do that, we're setting up here fake DNS. So once again, we're going to open up a PowerShell window as administrator. And once again, we're just going to go to the location of our exploit host and press enter just like we did before. And this time we're going to set up fake DNS. So to set up fake DNS, we're going to create a notepad document here. So open up notepad and we're going to type in uppercase A and then space and then manuals.playstation.net. So manuals.playstation.net and then another space and then the IP address of your computer, which you can get by opening up the command prompt and typing in IP config. And you can get your IP address of your computer right there. You can, of course, also get it by going to your network settings, by going to go to settings. And then from your network settings, you can go to your actual Wi-Fi network or wired network that you're connected to. And if you scroll down, you'll find the IPv4 address of your computer right there as well. And you can just copy it. So we're going to paste that IP address here. So we have a space manuals.playstation.net space your IP address of your computer. And then we're just going to save that as, <clears throat> and of course we want to save it to our exploit host folder. And we're going to call it DNS 
.conf and change the save as type to all files. So dns.config, dns.conf, and then save, and we are good to go. So next, we're just gonna go back to the exploit host to get the command that we need to run for fake DNS, which is this one right here. So we're gonna copy this command, python fake dns.py-c, dns.config, and we're just gonna paste that into this PowerShell window right here and press enter. You can see there parsed one rule from dns.config, so it's now running the fake DNS server. Okay, so now we're basically all set up to load the actual exploit itself. So, okay, we should be all good now. So all we need to do is switch back over to the PS5 and get set up on the PS5. Okay, so to get set up on the PS5, we're going to go into the network settings. We're going to go to settings, set up an internet connection, and we're going to select our Wi-Fi network or whatever network you're using to connect to the internet with and press the options button on the controller and go to advanced settings. From there, we're going to go down to DNS settings and change it to a manual DNS. And then for the primary IP address, you want to set that DNS address to the IP address of your computer. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.39. So just enter the IP address of your computer as the primary DNS and click OK. And then let it try and connect to the internet. Now, when I do this, you should start seeing on fake DNS, all these DNS requests popping up here. So that means that you do have things set up correctly. You now have everything set up to host the exploit manually. So now you can actually configure the exploit to run it exactly the way that you want to run it. So in my case, let's try the RPC server first of all. So if we switch back over here to the computer to set up the RPC server, there's a couple of things that you need to do. First of all, if we open up a notepad document and throw the RPC server.py inside, you need to set the host of the server to your computer's IP address. So we'll just go ahead and set this to the IP address of my computer and save the file. And then we want to run the RPC server, which of course we need to do by opening up another PowerShell window and running it as administrator. And once again, we'll take the file path, change directory to that file path, and then run the RPC server by typing in Python RPC server .py. I'm pressing enter and that's now running. So the next thing you need to do is actually edit the, the actual exploit file itself by going into document en ps5 and editing this exploit.js. Now I'm going to use notepad++. You can use any other advanced text editor that you have because you just want a text editor that can show you the line numbers of the page. So you can use notepad++ or you can use uh, I don't know what else you'd use, sublime text, VS code, and then scroll down to about 600 lines down, round about here. So if you scroll down a bit further, you'll eventually find, here we go, so lines uh, 657, round about here, you've got dumping and RPC settings. So this is currently set up for, I guess, Spectre's IP address of his computer, and you need to change it to the IP address of your computer in order to get this to work. So the way that the IP address is formatted is that it's in hexadecimal format and it's in reverse order uh, because it's a little endian. So x86 stores all the bytes in reverse order. So you need to store your IP address in reverse order as well. So basically, in my case, that's going to be 0x and then we've got 192. So my IP address is 192.168.1.39, which in hex is going to be c0 is 192 and then a8 is 168 and then 01 is 1 obviously and then 39 i don't actually know what 39 is in hex but if i open up a calculator and i set it to programmer mode i can type in 39 in decimal which is 27 in hex so we'll go ahead and put 27 in so that is 192.168.1.39 39 which is my ip address so i'll go ahead and replace the ip address for the dump the dump net address and the rpc net address with the ip address of my computer and i'll rename this to 192.168.1.39 because i have changed the ip address to my ip so save the exploit once you've added your ip address in there and we should be ready to go. We might want to reload the server as well, the HTTP server. 
So control C to terminate it and then run the command again, Python host.py to run the server and we are good to go. So now we can switch back over here to the PS5 and try and run the exploit. So we're going to go to the user guide and load the user guide up here. And we've got the security certificate. We'll say yes. And okay, so we get error 404 file not found. Now, if you live in the US and you're connecting from a US IP address, you're not going to get this issue. Probably the same for Canada as well, potentially. However, I'm going to get this issue. So I'm going to switch back over to the computer. The reason this happens is because the user guide is looking for a different location to load the user guide than what's set up here. So set up here, we've got document, EN, PS5, and then the exploit. So if you live in the US, it will be looking for that link. However, because I live in the UK, it's not looking for this EN folder. It's actually looking for a GB folder for Great Britain. So I have to change it to GB. If you live in, say, Spain, it might be looking for ES. Uh, you might have to change the folder to ES instead. So yeah, depending on, depending on what region you're connecting from, you may have to change this folder to your language uh, region. So in my case, it's GB for Great Britain. So if we switch back over here to the PS5 now and try and load the page again, reload, you can see it's now loading successfully. So yeah, you, that's a minor thing that you might have to change in order to get it to load. So not enough free system memory. We'll just click OK, let it reload again. And there we go, ready, click OK, and it'll start trying to run the exploit. And it failed, so I'll have to reboot and try again. All right, guys, so as you can see here, if we scroll down, it says connecting to RPC server in 10 seconds. If we switch back over here to the computer, you can see that if we head to our RPC server, boom, you can see we do have a response. We've got connection from uh, the PS5's IP address, and we do, and, and the port number, of course, and it says received kernel.database. So there we go. We do have a successful connection received. So that is all set up correctly. So, so to send an RPC command, there is an example here on the exploit on GitHub. So you can see here, we've got a read command. So we've got R and then a memory address. So we can read a memory address. We'll give that a try. Make sure we're still up and running here that we've not crashed. So we'll go ahead and paste that command in and hit enter. So you can see here, it has actually managed to read that memory address. We have the results from the memory read printed out here into the command line. Obviously, this is a very rudimentary setup right now, but you know, I think Spectre's planning on improving this according to the GitHub post. So if we have a look, we can also write as well. You can write data into a memory address. So we'll give this write command a try. But there we go. So we've got write command. Then there's the address that we're writing the values to. And we have 0x1337. So we'll go ahead and try and write that uh, right here. So let's go ahead and press enter. And there we go. Wrote keyword. So we successfully wrote that data into that memory address right there. So I guess we could try and read it. Oh, I think actually we got a crash there after writing that. Yep. Okay. Console crashed. So I guess we're not going to be able to read that memory address to see the data actually returned back that we changed. But you get the idea. You can actually write, you can read data from a memory address and you can write data into a memory address here using the RPC server. So hopefully this can be improved and be made a little bit more stable in future. So the next thing I want to show you guys is the dump server. So let's go ahead and get set up to use that as well. So we'll go ahead and terminate the RPC server now. Console's crashed anyway, so we can clear that and set up the dump server. So setting up the dump server is a little bit different here. What we're going to have to do is actually edit the exploit itself. So firstly, we're going to edit this again. I'll use Notepad++ just because it's easier. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom and we can see that the dump code is actually commented out. So what we need to do is uncomment out the dump code. So get rid of these forward slashes underneath the dump code text right here. And then that enables the dump code. And then we also need to get rid of the RPC code. So everything after this connect RPC and dump base data address, we're just going to comment out that entire section. So I'm just going to comment out that whole section there. So that's all gone. So now it's going to run the dump code instead of the RPC code. So we'll save that 
and we should be pretty much good to go. We've already added the IP address of the computer into the dump code address in the exploit host already. So we don't need to do that. The only thing we need to do now is go to the dump server and edit this. So I'll just use notepad for this. And we want to edit the host IP address again, just like we did with the RPC server and set that to our computer's IP address and save it. And we should be all set up and ready to go. So now all we need to do is run the dump server. So we'll do Python dump server dot py and that's now running the dump servers okay so as you can see here we are good even though it says connecting to rpc server that's fine if we switch back if we switch back over here so you can see it's now transferring the data to the computer and we just have to wait for this to complete it'll stop once it's finished and it'll say it timed out and then we'll have our dumped memory so what this is doing is dumping the kernel data at the moment that's what it's set up to dump by default but generally, this is just a way of dumping a large amount of memory to the computer rather than using the RPC commands, which, you know, are quite unstable and they can only write a certain amount of data or read a certain amount of data. Whereas if you want to read a large amount of data from the console, then you can use the dump code to dump much larger data sets. So that's essentially what this is useful for. So I skipped ahead here to the point where it's finished. So you can see it says it timed out. So if we head to the folder where our exploit host is, you can see that we now have a .bin file here. This is the dumped data. So we can throw this into a hex editor just to make sure that it has dumped the data successfully and we don't just have like null data in there. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling down here, there is data inside. So we have successfully dumped that portion of memory. So that's essentially how you dump your kernel data there to the computer. So yeah, that's basically how you host the exploit yourself manually and how to use some of those hidden features that are built into the exploit that I haven't really seen many other people show so far so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this or found the information useful of course this also enables the debug settings which i didn't show in this video but you know when you host it yourself there it does enable the debug settings so if you're not using the rpc server or the dump server you just run the exploit and then press circle once it's loaded and you'll have the debug settings when you back out and go back into the settings but if you are just looking to enable the debug settings you're much better off using a website that hosts the exploit for you so you don't have to go through all of this setup process and i did do a video on that already that i'll have linked in the description and in the cards there in the top right hand corner so you can check out that video if you just want to enable the debug settings but that is essentially how you host it manually and access some of those other features. So hope you guys enjoyed this video taking a closer look at Spectre's exploit. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.